During the Fourth Shinobi World War, we see Kakashi lose his Sharingan to Madara Uchiha, who uses it to enter the Kamui Dimension. How he did this, I don't really know, since the Kamui Kakashi uses is distant Kamui, not the immediate area Kamui like Obito. I assume it's a plot hole. Regardless, Tentails Jinchuriki Madara takes it from him and uses it to get to the Kamui Dimension, where he reclaims his second Rinnegan from Obito while simultaneously returning his second Sharingan to Obito. Kakashi is left blinded until Naruto uses Six Paths Chakra to heal his eye. But this was not the last we saw of Kakashi's Sharingan, as he once more reclaimed not only his own Mangekyo Sharingan, but Obito's other Mangekyo Sharingan at the same time after the latter's death. How it worked exactly, I can't remember. Some spirit thing. Point is that for a while, Kakashi had two Mangekyo Sharingan like a bonafide Uchiha. However, after the defeat of Kaguya Otsutsuki, Obito's soul moved on to the afterlife, and the power he bestowed upon Kakashi's eyes to turn them into Sharingan was gone, and Kakashi was returned to being a normal dude. But sometimes I wonder, what would have happened had Kakashi kept those awesome peepers permanently? Welcome to the Amagi! Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Also, we just released some brand new merch. If you'd like to show your support for the channel even further while at the same time repping stylish clothing, be sure to check that out as well. The store is linked below. YouTube's been unsubscribing users from channels lately, so if you're a fan of us, please do us a favor and double check to see if you're still subscribed. It only takes a second and it helps us a ton here at Amagi. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. All right. We should probably start with the last movie. To be honest, in this movie, Kakashi couldn't do too much more than he was already doing. That being said, if he had kept the Mangekyo he had been gifted by Obito, he wouldn't have needed Sasuke and Lee to destroy the meteorite. All he would have needed to do was look up at it and boom, it's gone. The power of Kamui would have swallowed the whole thing up. As for the Boruto series, if Kakashi kept his double Mangekyo Sharingan, I could still see him being a highly active member of Konoha's Shinobi forces. So let's see what he would be doing in Boruto if he were more active and he had his double Mangekyo Sharingan. The first time he'd be present in the story, I see it being during the Chunin exams, where he watches Boruto get disqualified for cheating. Kakashi then witnesses the Otsutsuki attack. He'd begin to aid in the fight against the Otsutsuki. During this time, when Momoshiki throws the energy ball that Naruto tries to contain to save the citizens, Kakashi would be able to warp it away with Kamui. He would then go in to attack Momoshiki, who would grab him by the foot and throw him away. He realizes that Momoshiki absorbs chakra attacks with the Rinnegan on his right hand, so he decides to keep with Taijutsu. This is perfect though, as his Kamui gives him the advantage. However, before he can attack, he's blown away. You see, unlike Obito, Kakashi doesn't have Hashirama Senju's cells, meaning that his Mangekyo Sharingan can't be spammed, not without him risking going blind, so he can't just phase through every attack. He needs to save it for critical moments and for avoiding fatal shots. He would pass out from the attack. However, he would wake up after some time has passed and find that Naruto has been taken. Kakashi, for the time being, assumes command of Konoha and begins to coordinate with the other Kage, attempting to get them prepared to find Naruto while Sasuke works on using space-time ninjutsu to get to whatever location they're at. Sasuke would find Boruto and would bring him with him to rescue Naruto. With the entire team together, they set out to find him, discovering him chained to a divine tree and having his tailed beast chakra pulled from him. Kakashi would use Kamui to teleport up there and kick Momoshiki away while freeing Naruto. He would ask Naruto if he's okay, and Naruto would respond that he's never been better. Naruto shifts into Six Path Sage Mode and begins to fight against Momoshiki alongside Sasuke, while Kakashi and the other Kage focus on Kenshiki. Kenshiki would form his chakra weapons, but Kakashi was prepared and has long since been stockpiling various weapons of his own in the Kamui Dimension. He begins to open up portals and fires the weapons at Kenshiki, who blocks and dodges them before getting close to Kakashi. Kakashi would flip back from a handstand to avoid being struck, and as the axe of Kinjiki comes through to sever him at the waist, he would use short-range Kamui in the same fashion as Obito to become intangible in that moment and phase right through Kinjiki before turning around and disarming the Otsutsuki before kicking him away. Kinjiki would roll as he looks up, utterly confused with how Kakashi could be so powerful. Kakashi walks towards him casually. Let's just call this all off, and you and your master can go home. Sound fair? Kinchiki, enraged by the insinuation that he and his master would need to flee, stands up once more and begins to attack Kakashi, phasing right through him as a sudden slash from a Susanoo blade cleaves him in two. 
Kakashi sighs as he wished it wouldn't come to that. Suddenly, the mortally wounded Kinshiki would cry out, Master Momoshiki, take my power. Let me protect you one last time. Momoshiki would turn Kinshiki into a pill and pop him, absorbing his power and growing stronger as a result. Momoshiki would continue to face off against Naruto and Sasuke, easily gripping their fists as they come through, smiling with surety and pride. What he didn't expect was Kakashi to rush in with his Raikiri. He manages to punch a hole right through Momoshiki. Momoshiki is then struck by Naruto and Sasuke and sent flying. He sits there for a moment before getting back up, spitting blood, his eyes glaring as his shattered pride attempts to mend itself like the hole in his chest. Momoshiki smiles once more. I think I can juggle one more. Momoshiki powers up and continues the assault. After witnessing Kakashi phase through his attacks, Momoshiki begins to assume that this is the power of his Mangekyo Sharingan. He begins to adapt his strategy to it, striking with superior speed right as Kakashi is attempting to strike. Naruto, Sasuke, and Kakashi together are able to push him back. Momoshiki responds by creating a massive golem out of stone, to which Kakashi and Sasuke respond with their Susano, and Naruto with his Kurama Avatar Beast Mode. Sasuke would merge his Susano with Naruto and Kurama, donning Kurama in the majestic armor of Susano. Kakashi's own Susana would be there to help too, and when their blade begins to cross with Momoshiki's, Kakashi would throw out his Kamui Shuriken to slowly take chunk after chunk away from Momoshiki's golem, until Naruto and Sasuke can carve the golem in two. As it hits the ground, the battle continues, but slowly it seems that Kakashi is running out of steam. Maybe his age is catching up with him. Boruto would then attempt to throw a Rasengan much to everyone's chagrin. However, it fizzles out before it even hits Momoshiki, which catches Momoshiki off guard and smashes into his face, knocking him over. At this time, Naruto and Boruto share chakra and form the father-son Big Ball Rasengan, which Boruto uses to kill Momoshiki, but not before being branded by Momoshiki with the Karma Seal. After this, Kakashi needs a break. He doesn't get it though, as not too much longer thereafter, the daimyo makes his way to Konoha to meet with Naruto personally. Kakashi, as a member of Konoha's council, is to aid Naruto in his communications with the most powerful man in all of the Land of Fire. During this time, Kakashi is in awe of how many faux pas a Hokage can make at any one time. Nonetheless, the daimyo is a very forgiving man. Recognizing Naruto for the great work he has done, as well as possessing a certain soft spot for the Hokage due to how much his own son, Tento, idolizes him. This gives Kakashi a good sigh of relief as he vows to mentor Naruto a bit more on how to properly talk to political officials, knowing that even the slightest mispronunciation or gaffe could lead to war. But before he can leave, his plate is filled up when rumors surface that the Mujina bandits have kidnapped the daimyo's son, Tento. He would then be sent out after him alongside Team Konohamaru, and would eventually find Boruto and Tento just in time, before the bandit leader Shoujoji can kill them. Kakashi laughs at how this had all come full circle, and how if Boruto had allowed the bandit from the bank robbery earlier to escape, as was the plan, this wouldn't have happened. He realizes that Boruto is truly just like his father, knowing that the boy is just as prone to stupidity and gaffes as his father is. They manage to bring him back to Konoha, where Kakashi proceeds to interrogate Shoujoji. Intimidated by the presence of the 6th Hokage, as well as the Mangekyo Sharingan that Kakashi swears will rip him apart should he not divulge the information he has on the strange mark on Boruto's hand, Shoujoji begins to tell them everything they need to know about Kara. After this, Kakashi would be present as Boruto and Naruto train, with this fight going further than just testing the boy against his father. Naruto is also testing one of Katasuke's new scientific ninja tools. Naruto plans to send Katasuke to a research lab to continue his work, and to do that, he needs Team 7. Kakashi enters Naruto's office privately after and asks the status of the mission to investigate the blimp that had fallen, and Naruto states that they have it handled. He instead plans to send Kakashi with Boruto, Sarada, and Mitsuki to protect Katasuke and the scientific ninja tool on their way to the facility. Kakashi scoffs at the idea of being reduced to a grandpa babysitting children, and Naruto tells him to think of it as a coming out of retirement to lead Team 7 once more. So Kakashi goes with them and boards the Thunder Train. There they encounter Ao, who claims to be a patient of Katasuke's, who saved his life. Boruto seems less than pleased at the concept of scientific ninja tools, holding a grudge against them since that time he used them to cheat in the Chunin exams. Ao, however, threatens Boruto, stating that scientific ninja tools aren't bad unless they're used that way. Seeing this display, Kakashi is already propping against the booth, looking at the man now covered in robotic parts. It's been a while, Ao. How long has it been since we last saw each other? Fifteen years? The Fourth Great Ninja War. Kakashi would nod. You were with communications. That was until that tailed beast bomb wiped you all out. Lost a lot of good shinobi that day. How did you survive? 
Ao doesn't make eye contact with him. Dumb luck. A lot of dumb luck and a bunch of dumb people. Kakashi looks him over. Lost your Byakugan, but it looks like you gained a lot of other things in return. Ao finally makes eye contact with Kakashi. Don't patronize me, not when you didn't lose a single damn thing. Kakashi shrugs. Just chatting with an old war buddy. Nothing wrong with that. The conversation seems to hit an awkward moment to which nobody seems to speak or even look at each other again, just as Kakashi had hoped. After all, without threatening Boruto like that, it was best if they just ignored each other. They get off the train and make it to the facility where everyone begins to laugh and play around. Kakashi looks at all the wonderful tools and wonders when it'll be that someone will make a robotic Sharingan. With the Uchiha in short numbers, not many people are using it anymore. Katasuke mentions that he's actually been working on something similar to that, an eye that fits into the socket and has an FPS faster than even the human eye, capable of capturing things in great detail and sending it to the brain. Furthermore, it offers a visual genjutsu filter which will allow anyone to look into a Sharingan without being subject to the jutsu. But lastly, Katasuke states that through a special method in the eye, they can both project illusions via holographics and even cast false genjutsu into the minds of others by using a special slashing light within the eye designed to force their enemy brains to witness and do things out of their control, in a method not too dissimilar from forcing a controlled epileptic seizure. Kakashi calls the tool brutal, but Katasuke states that there are still quite a few bugs. Kakashi tells him to be careful, else he might just put the Uchiha out of business. Something Katasuke jokes about through mention of Itachi beating him to it, to which Kakashi does not laugh. After this, as they leave the facility, they're contacted by Konoha, telling them that Konohamaru has missed his scheduled check-ins. Kakashi and Team 7 are sent to investigate and find Konohamaru in a cave with Mugino. Kakashi would try to offer aid, only to be confronted by Ao. Kakashi would sigh, stating that he knew that Ao felt off and wished that it wasn't true. Ao states that it is true. He is working for Kara and credits them with saving his life after the fourth Shinobi World War. Kakashi asks him if it's worth it to know that he's a traitor. Ao states that they gave him new purpose and a new body, essentially stating that the Ao they knew was dead and gone, and this was the new Ao. He then states that it's too bad that they must die now. He begins to collapse the cave, but through the use of Kamui, Kakashi helps Team 7 escape. They begin to face off against Ao in close quarters. Ao defends himself with jutsu absorbing tools, but Kakashi begins to go for taijutsu, phasing through Ao's attacks with Kamui. In the end, even this is futile as Ao analyzes his battle patterns and begins to beat Kakashi back. Kakashi would begin to wonder why it's not as simple as it used to be as he raises back to his feet. Kakashi would rush at Ao once more and completely pass through him with Kamui before appearing behind him and throwing Kamui's shuriken at him from behind, hoping to find a way to harm him without using chakra based jutsu or useless physical attacks. He believes that this attack will do the trick, and indeed it does, as the blades strike into Ao, taking out many of his weapons and defenses, leaving him weakened and defeated. However, it isn't long after that Koji Kashin appears and crushes Ao with a toad. He then locks Team 7 and company in a frog suppression jutsu. Kakashi manages to break them out through his Kamui. Through this, he escapes with his team and manages to reappear outside of the seal where he summons his Susano for battle. With it, he begins to attack Koji. A part of him though feels happy and full of nostalgia for some reason, as he feels as though he were in his 20s again, enjoying his favorite novels. He does battle with Koji and his Toad using Susano, and though he fails to kill Koji, he succeeds in driving him away. They then return to Konoha with Konohamaru to report to Naruto, though Kakashi secretly notes to Konohamaru that he's starting to have trouble seeing. Konohamaru asks which eye is giving him trouble, and Kakashi mentions that it's both of them. Before they leave, they discover a strange boy unconscious near the wreckage. The boy wakes up in a volatile state, and despite his attempts to calm him down, Kakashi largely fails, and the group are attacked by the boy who displays incredible power on the same level as Naruto, give or take. Kakashi would sigh as he'd once more be forced to awaken his Mangekyo to face off against the two. At that time though, Boruto displays his own seal, and after some time, they manage to convince the boy now known as Kawaki to return with them to the village. Kakashi would then report to Naruto about it, who would then volunteer to take the boy in and shelter him at his own home. Kakashi would take some time off to rest, noting to Sasuke that his vision is going away. Sasuke seems disturbed by this and wonders if there is anything they can do to fix it. He asks how Obito managed to use it for so long without going blind, and Kakashi states that it was likely due to the cells of Hashirama Senju. Sasuke tells Kakashi that he would do best to visit Tsunade and ask her about getting some of those cells to save his vision. Kakashi would do so and speak with Tsunade who would examine his eyes and note the damage to his macula and various other parts. 
Kakashi asks if she could reverse it, and she states that his theory about Hashirama's cells could prove to be correct, but that it would take her time to cultivate enough, and that until such a time as she was finished, he should avoid using his Mangekyo, as she worried that if he went completely blind from overuse, that not even Hashirama's cells would be enough to restore his vision. Later on, he hears from Naruto about the battle with the android Delta who had come for Kawaki, but besides that, he notes how socially awkward Kawaki is, and how morally grey his entire personality is. Kakashi states that it's likely a result of the life he was forced to live and how he was raised. Naruto agrees, but wishes that it could at least be easier. Kakashi then informs Naruto of his vision problems resulting from overuse of the Mangekyo, stating that it is still possible for him to fix it with Hashirama's cells, and Naruto states that he's going to pull Kakashi off active duty until such a time arrives. It isn't long after this though that Jigen makes his appearance in the village. Naruto and Sasuke engage in battle with him to defend Kawaki and Boruto. Kakashi would make his way to help them, but would be told to leave it to them by Sasuke, who reminds him that he is on health leave as ordered by the 7th Hokage. Due to this, Kakashi relents, instead putting his faith in Naruto and Sasuke. However, after only Sasuke returns from the alternate dimension, Kakashi realizes his mistake and notes that he should have gone with them. It's then that Team 7 infiltrates Jigen's lair, secretly, to retrieve Naruto, to which they succeed in doing. However, Momoshiki began to awaken and control Boruto. They return to Konoha with Naruto, and Kakashi is grateful for this. It's not much longer until Amato is sent to Konoha by Koji Kashin, as Koji attempts to assassinate Jigen. They watch the whole thing go down remotely. As they watch, Kakashi can't help but crave to read Makeout Paradise once more, and upon learning that Koji is Jiraiya's clone, Kakashi immediately asks if they think they'll get a sequel to Makeout Paradise. It's then that he manages to incinerate Jigen, causing Ishiki, the true identity, to resurrect fully into Jigen's body as it was ready. This causes the karma on Kawaki's hand to disappear. Jigen knows he only has a short time left to live and must get Kawaki back if he's to survive, so he unleashes his full powers on Koji and manages to defeat him. He then immediately teleports to the village hidden in the leaves where he begins to run amok. Naruto and Sasuke along with Boruto make their way to face him, with Naruto telling Kakashi that he needs to stay behind for his vision's sake. Kakashi refuses this though, stating that this is the biggest threat the village has seen since the days of pain, and that he isn't going to let Ishiki do as he pleases. He may not be Hokage anymore, but he's still going to fight, even against Naruto's orders, reminding him of what he taught him. A shinobi who breaks the rules may be scum, but a shinobi who would abandon even one of his friends is worse than scum. Naruto relents, but tells Kakashi to use his dojutsu sparingly. They make it to the battle and begin to face off against Ishiki, but find him overly powerful and have a hard time facing off against him. What's worse, this fight is causing a lot of collateral damage. Kakashi attempts to use his Raikiri on Ishiki, only for his hand to be grabbed, with Ishiki spinning in a circle, using Kakashi's momentum against him to spin him around and throw him into a building. Kakashi lays there for a moment, just trying to breathe again. He sits up and rejoins the battle. At that time, Boruto begins attempting to teleport them away to a new location, and Kakashi follows. Arriving on the battlefield, he decides that now is the time to use his Mangekyo Sharingan. He attempts to rush him with Taijutsu, but even though he passed through Ishiki's attacks, the moment he turns tangible again to attack the Otsutsuki, he's struck with a rod. He attempts to send him to the Kamui dimension, but he comes back. Kakashi decides that the best thing he can do now is bring out the big guns, and in doing so, he manifests his Susano and attempts to pulverize Ishiki. However, the Otsutsuki proves to be even stronger than this, using his black rods and his big black cube things, he assaults the Susano. Kakashi once more tries Kamui Shuriken, but this results in the Shuriken being shrunken down infinitely by Sukuna Hikona. Kakashi's Susano dissipates as he runs out of chakra. Even Sasuke and Naruto are on their last legs. It's then that, when everything seems over, Naruto unleashes Baryon mode. For a single moment, Kakashi gets to witness it before his vision leaves him. He's left in darkness, only capable of hearing the fight and sensing the chakra. He senses a chakra with the intensity of the sun and knows it must be Naruto, but slowly even that burns out. Ishiki is left victorious over them and demands Kawaki or else he'll kill Naruto. Kawaki comes out. Ishiki knows his time was cut short, so he rushes to Kawaki, but before he could transfer, it's revealed that Kawaki was nothing more than a clone. This results in Ishiki's death as his time runs out. Finally, they know peace, but it doesn't last very long as the panicked voices of Sasuke and Boruto call out to Naruto, whose chakra Kakashi can barely sense anymore. However, at this moment, Kakashi senses a new chakra, one he hasn't sensed since... Sasuke, look out, he shouts. This was enough to get Sasuke's attention. Sasuke turns around just in time to see a kunai coming at his eye. 
He had just enough forewarning from Kakashi to prepare and launch Emeno Tejikara to switch places with Borushiki and put him on the ground. Boruto manages to regain control over himself and they check on Naruto. Naruto manages to survive this, but the cost is Kurama's life. They return to the village lamenting the death of the tailed beast, as well as the loss of Kakashi's eyes. Tsunade informs him that his eyes are totaled and they likely couldn't be saved even with the cells of Hashirama Senju. It's then that Katasuke comes in carrying a case in his hands. He mentions to Kakashi that he heard he had gone blind and offers his condolences. However, he also states that Kakashi's trip to the research facility was enough to get Katasuke on the ball, with the scientist declaring that he had finally worked out the bugs in the prosthetic Sharingan. He wanted Kakashi to be the first test subject. I call them the Digigon, he shouted. Kakashi would cringe and tell him that he might want to think out a new name. Katasuke laughs and states that it's impossible as the patent is already pending. Kakashi opens his eyes and finds that he can see. He looks into a mirror and notes that they look a lot like regular eyes. Katasuke tells him to activate them. In doing so, the sclera shifts to a black tone, and the iris turns red as digital tomoe appear within, spinning at a constant rate. Kakashi smiles. Well, at least he made them look good. Katasuke tells him that he's sorry, but he's unable to restore the Kamui ability to him with the current tech that they have, but that he should continue to wait as technology progresses. Kakashi waves it off, stating it's okay. All he really needs is the Susano. This bittersweet victory, however, would be offset when Ishiki appears to code to pass on the Otsotsuki will. But I guess that's another story for another day. And that's all I got right now. Honestly, I was really hoping to go way down the rabbit hole and display Kakashi's abilities with his new scientific Digigon. I thought it seemed cool to add it in. I just know that to continue that line of thought would bring us into the code arc, which technically isn't over yet as I make this video, and would just hate to end it on an incomplete note. So I hope you don't mind me stopping here. I really enjoyed writing this. I love Kakashi as a character, he's real laid back and somehow commands respect from everyone. I really wish he could be utilized a lot more than he is, but then again, I guess this really is Boruto, Naruto's next generation. I suppose that's what the death of Kurama and the loss of Sasuke's Rinnegan meant. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little story. Let me know in the comments what you thought, and remember to click that thumbs up if you liked the video. Did you enjoy our video? Well, then be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi. And make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.